The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. On a Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees, and the people who were there were observing him carefully. He told a parable to those who had been invited, noticing how they were choosing the places of honor at the table. When you're invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline at table in the place of honor. A more distinguished guest than you may have been invited by him, and the host who invited him, invited both of you, may approach and say to you, give your place to this man, and then you would proceed with embarrassment to take the lowest place. Rather, when you are invited, go and take the lowest place, so that when the host comes and says, he may say to you, my friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Then he said to the host who invited him, when you hold a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or wealthy neighbors in case they may invite you back and you have repayment. Rather, when you hold a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Beloved family, whatever is beautiful, whatever is amazing, it comes from God and is a gift to all of us. And so, to live a Christian vocation is to live in the presence of God with the joy, with the humility, <coughs> and with the many blessings that we come to receive. So when a child, when a child early in the morning says to his mother in a humble way, mother, in a humble way, mother, can I have three pancakes instead of two? Will that be okay? In a very humble, gentle way. The mother will say, my little one, you are not going to get three, you are going to get four. Because it's proclaimed with humility, with gentleness. And by doing simple things like that, children, they are being called. They are being called in their Christian vocation to be simple, to be humble, to be respectful to the mother, to the father, and to, call, and to, and to come to Mass every Sunday. Children, huh? And so we come to see Teenagers. When a teenager tells the father and the mother, tells them, you know, daddy, I know that you work so much. You dedicate so much time to the family. You are such a beautiful and good father to me. You know, don't worry about giving me all those things, buying those things for me. I understand. You take care of yourself, and I am fine right now. What do we hear? What do we see there? We see a teenager who comes to embrace humility, who understands, and who is living his Christian vocation in such a beautiful way. And the father will say, or the mother will say, 
my son, my daughter, because I see how you are, don't you worry. I will take care of that. I will buy whatever you want. <laughs> For you and I, whether we are at work, whether we are in our own houses with our own families, when we come to be nice to one another, respectful to one another, friendly to one another, nice to one another, what are we doing? We are being children of God in the one vocation that God has given us. And so, when we do it like that, we are being a blessing to one another. When we come to our Christian community to gather, to gather together, to worship, to praise the Lord, when we come in a, in a way that proclaims the goodness of God, there we are embracing our Christian community. We know that so many people suffer the terrible things of the fires that we just got a few days ago. When you and I, when we pray to God for all those who suffer the consequences of these fires, and we tell God, bless them, help them, and we also find ways to help all of them, what are we doing? We are living our Christian vocation to its fullness. And so that is so much important to all of us. And this is whether we are a married person, whether we are a priest, we're a single person, we are being called at this level to be like that in the Christian vocation that we have received. And so, why is so important for you and, and I to embrace this this morning? Because when it comes to children, truthfully, if we listen attentively to children, what is the one request that they keep asking to all of us? Teenagers. Young adults. What is the one thing that they keep asking? They keep asking, can someone teach me how to live my Christian vocation? Can somebody teach me how to live my Christian life? On one occasion I was, I went to, to do ministry in one of the neighborhoods. And I decided instead of dressing as a priest, I decided to dress as a basketball player. We had to be also clever, so if I dress as a priest, maybe they will not come to me. If I dress as a basketball player, then maybe they will come to me. <laughs> as I was preparing my little bones to play basketball, one big guy with big muscles was getting closer and closer to me. And his face wasn't really friendly. And I was thinking, oh Lord, I do not know him. I've been good to everybody, but why is he coming to me in such a way? And I was thinking, like, okay, let me see the, where is the exit. So there was no exit, so <laughs> things were getting worse. When he was close to me, he told me, I heard that you told someone, God bless you. And so he told me, you know, my life has been so difficult. I'm empty. I don't know what to do with my life. It's so been difficult. Would you please teach me? Teach me how to live a good life. Would you please? And tears will come through his eyes. Can you do that for me? He didn't know that was a priest. That was his request. That was his request. So I told him, don't you worry. Your request will be taken care. And so, beloved family in Christ, nowadays, nowadays, 
when it comes to our children, who is teaching them how to behave as children of God? How are we teaching our children to be respectful, to be kind to one another, to be friendly? How are we teaching our children to have an encounter, a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ? How, how are we teaching our children to be humble? To be humble with their peers, with their families. How are we doing this? When it comes to our teenagers, how are we teaching them to embrace life in such a way that they feel with meaning, that they feel that there is a reason for them to be here with us? Children, teenagers, what are we teaching them? Are we truly teaching them how to live a Christian life in their one vocation? Because we may be giving them everything, but if we don't give them to the, the love and the kindness and the joy of our Lord Jesus Christ, we may not be giving them the most important. And that is Jesus. Teenagers, what are we teaching them? Why so many of them are going through depression? So much emptiness? And so today, in today's proclamation, we come to embrace and to proclaim the necessity to help one another to embrace our Christian vocation to its fullness, to its fullness, to help one another, to help one another. And so, how do we see this? <coughs> you know, when I was a little one, when I was a child, my grandmother, she was helping me to do this. I was four or five, I don't exactly remember. But she would say to me, my little one, come, get closer to me. She was 92 years old and I was four or five years old. Get closer to me. And she would say to me, my little one, regardless of what you do in life, always remain with Jesus. Be respectful. Be good to everybody regardless of anything. How many times did she say those things to me? Many, many, many times. And what was the one thing that she was doing to me? She was teaching me how to live a Christian vocation. She was doing that. She was able to say, this is the way to go, in a simple way. That was so important for us. And so, in today's readings, we hear Jesus. What is Jesus doing to us? He is teaching us how to live our Christian vocation. He's telling us, don't be arrogant. Don't be too prideful. Move away from all that. But instead, be humble. Be humble to one another. If we want to be great, if we want to be amazing, let us be humble to one another. And with humility, we find a way to be blessed, to be blessed by God and to, ble to be blessed by one another. 
And in humility, what do we encounter? In humility, we encounter gentleness, compassion, understanding. In humility, we encounter the love of God. And we have the ability to keep going in life as difficult as it may be because Jesus Christ, God our Father, is there. Is there. And so it's so important for us to see how Jesus is teaching us. And so what Jesus Christ is doing to us in this gospel this morning, Jesus Christ invites us, each one of us, to do what He's doing to us, to do it to others, to teach, to help one another in such a profound and real way. You know, it's so beautiful to be able to bring the good news to one another. In the second reading, at the beginning of the second reading, we hear about darkness, emptiness, isolation. And then as the reading goes on, it speaks about hope, light, coming to be closely together with our Lord Jesus Christ. Your Christian vocation, my Christian vocation, is invited to remain with the light and to move away from whatever darkness we may have. That's how we are being called to live a Christian life. And so this morning, for you and for me, the question is, what do we really want? What do we really want? Do we want our children to know and to live life in simpleness, in humility? What do we really, really, really want? Do we want our families that experience a sense of being together as a family, our youth, to be fully alive, to be nice to one another. And the other personal question here is, this morning, in the one vocation that God has given us, how each one of us is living, how each one of us come to live our daily life in such a profound and real way. That's something for us to take the time to say, what do we really want? Why is this so important? Because if we know what we want, then in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we can go on and make that possible. Once we come to identify what we want, so we dedicate our lives to make that happen and to make that happen for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. So when it comes for vocations. Vocations to the diaconate, vocations to the priesthood. What do we really want? For years, this community is saying we want deacons to say yes to God to respond and to be a blessing to this community. And so if we want that, we can see that we have our deacon here and we have other deacons. And soon next year, hopefully, God willing, we will have two more deacons. Because what do we want? We want deacons. 
So we want the blessing, we go and we get the blessing, huh? Okay. Now, when it comes to what do we want in terms of vocations to the priesthood? We want many vocations to the priesthood, but specifically born and raised here in the, in the United States, but also born and raised here in these communities. Because that's what we want, eh? Yes, Father, that's what we want. And we need a lot of that. I'm encouraging myself, so. And so, in a humble way and with great joy, this year, you, this community, you also, you are having also one vocation, one seminarian for this diocese as a way of celebration, as, as a way to say, yes, we are getting what we are being asked to do and to get. We are getting more vocations to the priesthood. And so, if you do not know him, but if, or if you know him, praise the Lord, pray for him, and also congratulate him. Anthony, would you please stand? You receive our congratulations. Now, beloved community, what do we want for Anthony? It's a personal question. If you say in your heart, you say, I am too sleepy this morning to think about that, that can be one thing. But if you say, what do we want for our seminarian Anthony? We want him to be the best one. We want him to go to the seminary and dedicate his life and be in the best possible formation he can get. And one day he can be a great priest for the diocese and for the glory of God. If that's what we want, so yes, okay. So now the question is, what can we do? And you say, well, whenever I pray a rosary, I pray for vocations and I pray for him. Because that's what we want. We have already identified what we want. And they, we say, we want him not only to be a good priest, but also to be a saint with our deacons and our future deacons. So we intensify our prayers. And then, imagine this beautiful thing. If you, in your own prayers, if you say, God, besides these blessings, what I also want is my own grandchildren, one of them at least to become a priest or a sister. That's what I also want. I can see right now so many hands saying, Father, you are reading my mind. <coughs> Whoever smiles, that's what you are thinking. You say, you know, I want one of my sons to be a priest. One of my daughters to be a sister. Or I want my children to be holy married couples. If we want that, the question, if we really want that, the question is, what are we going to do? Because to consecrate them to God, to consecrate them to God and to say, Oh, Heavenly Father, you have given to them to me and I've given them back to you. They belong to you. And so we come to, to be together to have many blessings. To have many blessings. So, for you and for me specifically, we have to create opportunities so that we can be able to create, to cultivate, and to have these blessings, opportunities. And so, I am presenting to you this morning three opportunities to have these blessings, to make these things happen. And God is inviting you to cooperate, to help, so that these opportunities will be taken advantage, we will be taken advantage of them. 
During the month of October, we are going to have three retreats. Three retreats. For junior high and for high school men and women. The first two retreats. So, if you want your children, your grandchildren, to learn how to live life with humility, how to live life centered in our Lord Jesus Christ. You want your children, your grandchildren, to know how to embrace their Christian sexuality in a healthy and a beautiful way. You say, Father Javier, since you have the information outside at the entrance, I will write down my name and I will talk to my children or grandchildren, so I will be inviting them to go there. Who is going to do this? Whoever wants to do this by invitation. But if we care for them, if we proclaim that we care for our children, <coughs> for the youth, why don't we do this for them? Why don't we do this for them? Now, as you give this invitation for, to them in the name of Jesus, this is my invitation. Be persuasive. Be persuasive. Don't tell them, well, if you want to go, you have the time. But if you don't really want to go, well, it's like, see what you think. That's not being persuasive. That's not being persuasive. And this is so important. But if you tell them, my most handsome son, daughter, you know, I care for you and I want the best for you. And this is a good opportunity for you, for you to go. And if you go, I go with you. And we are going to make things possible. And if the time is given there, after all this, I can take you to in and out or to Starbucks, but first we have to go to this. <laughs> Persuasive, full of life. And then we can have these blessings. In this way, we are going to have more and more blessings. So it's up to each one of us. Outside, there will be many rosaries, a lot of information, a lot of gifts, everything is for free. Take it, and also the information will be there so that you can talk to your families. Beloved family, this is the time for us to go on and to make the difference. To make the difference. It's not up to Jesus anymore. It's not up to the Holy Spirit, to God. It's up to each one of us. If we want holy and dedicated married couples, it's up to us to make that possible. If we want holy and dedicated religious sisters, priests, it's up to us. It's up to us to come together and in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ make all this possible. So, my grandmother, she was the one who really helped me a lot to make this possible to me. Now, maybe your children, your grandchildren, maybe they are hoping that God will be working through each one of you to help them to live their Christian vocation and to live it with joy, with excitement, to live it always in the living presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 In this way, we do not need coffee to be away, but we need the living, the, living, the, the living presence of the Holy Spirit in each one of us.